Okay, our last uh, section here. Um, so there's another way we can make a three-dimensional solid that they're going to ask us from a, from a region. Um, instead of rotating the region around an axis to make a three-dimensional solid, we're going to take cross-sections of that region. And that cross-section um, is going to then, we're going to kind of make a shape out of the cross-section, whether it's a square or a triangle or a rectangle or a half a circle. And um, that is going to make um, a three-dimensional shape, those cross-sections. And each cross-section will have a volume, and then the integral is going to add up the volumes of all those cross-sections. And then um, and then that will give us the volume of the shape created. So some geometry concepts to remember is today, uh, our, our today, is we're going to be looking at basically prisms, okay? These... Cross sections are prisms, but they're very, very thin. So again, I like to give you the traditional sense of the prism from geometry. Okay, so that would be a prism, if all these sides are equal, that would be a prism with a square base. So we call it a square prism. And the volume of this thing is going to be equal to the area of the base times the height of the prism. We're going to write it like that, where B is a changing formula. In this case, since it's a square base, the volume formula would be side squared uh, times the height. So H is this height of the prism. And then each one of these sides, since they're equal, we'll call them S. So essentially, I find the area of the base. You can do the top one. Or you can picture finding the area of the bottom one. And then we multiply by the height. That's how we find the volume of any prism. So if I change the shape of the base, so if I do a triangular prism, right, then the volume formula for this is area of the base times the height of the prism. H is how tall it is. Uh, so that would be volume equals one half base times height times height. So the little h is the height of the triangle. So this, remember, is finding the area of the base. And then we just multiply by how high those are stacked. It's really the same idea that we're going to use again here to find volume. Um, it's all kind of based off this Cavalieri's principle idea. Um, okay, so these cross sections, I know they don't look like they have a prism, but they are. And the way they're a prism is if we take... This traditional prism we're used to, and again, we slice it very thin. This is the idea. I'm trying to show you how it's a, how this slice is a prism. If we slice it very thin, so now our height is very, very thin, and that means we're going to start calling it delta x and eventually dx when it gets so small that it's an infinitesimal. So we're going to take that, and we're going to turn it on its side, and we get one of these guys. where this, what we're seeing, this cross section is the base. So we're gonna find the area of that cross section. And then the height of the prism is this little thickness right here. So we'll multiply by that height, which we're gonna use dx to represent that thickness. That'll find the volume of one cross section. And then when we add them all up from left to right or whatever, the integral will do that. We add them all up, we'll get the volume of that three dimensional shape. So. It's going to be about deciding what shape is this cross section, and that's going to define the shape of the base. And that's going to define what formula we're using to find the area of the base. This height is always going to be dx because the thickness is always this dx right here. All right, so there's like four or five types that you're going to see. Alexa wants to get involved. All right, so um, let's see here. Um, cross sections that are squares. So that means that tells us our base is a square. So if we pull out one of these cross sections, we're just looking at the base, right? Remember, if I wanna draw the thickness in there, the height of the prism, it's very, very thin. And that would be a width of dx. Um, so we're gonna call this, this is the bottom part we're gonna say that touches. Let me redraw on this guy. Let's look at the first one or the first one we can kind of see well. This bottom part right here 
is going to be the part that's touching. Uh, that one's not great. Let's look at this one. The part that's touching the region. And that length is always going to be the difference between these two curves. So you can see that there's an f of x on top and a g of x that comes underneath, right? So that length, remember the way we get that length is that this distance to that curve is f of x. This distance to that curve is g of x. So that yellow distance is going to always be f of x minus g of x, the upper curve minus the lower curve. So then once we find that, since it's a square, we know that the base that's touching is that length, f of x minus g of x. So then the height of this thing is going to be f of x minus g of x. So if we find the area of the base, which is a square, the square's cross section is going to be f of x minus g of x, that's the side that touches, times itself, squared. All right? If we added up all of those cross-sectional areas, and really we're really doing volumes here. I know that when we make the dx zero, it becomes an area, but I want to talk about the volume here of one slice, I'll say again. So it's got some kind of thickness, right? That's going to be, volume is going to be the area of the base times the thickness, which we're calling dx because it's so, so small. That's the volume of one of those prisms. One slice, or I'll call it a prism because that's what it is. Now, as we make the dx smaller and smaller and smaller, we're eliminating the error of our volume estimation. We're getting more and more uh, prisms and we're adding those all up and the integral will do that for us. So the volume will add up, the volume of that shape will add up an infinite amount of these square bases. So there's the area of the base times um, the thickness. So this represents the volume of one of those prisms, and then we're adding them all up from A to B, okay? This, remember, represents the area of the cross section, which is the base of our prism. All right, to give you a visual, we have this program here. So here I only put in like, say, 10 rectangles. Then when we think about, because it's a square, uh, we want to remember that This length, the length across, right, the bottom where it touches is the same length, it's the same height. So when the distance here isn't that long, then these aren't gonna be that tall. When it's longer here, they're gonna be taller as well. So as you move across this thing from left to right, they start as small squares and they get bigger. All right, so we have, this is us looking down overhead on it. And if I kind of take a sideways view, you can see the same thing happening because they're squares, right? So this is what this solid looks like for, you know, 10 of these guys. Okay, there's the overhead view. And then if we turn it sideways, as we add more and more of them, you can see it smooths out, it smooths out and the air kind of goes away. This is kind of the shape we would get from this thing. These are kind of hard to think about what they would look like in the end but all you really have to focus on is just one of these cross sections. All right, so um, the volume for square bases would be this. And why? Because it's all about, this dx will always be there because it's the thickness of our prism. It's all about what's the area of the cross section. That's what we're figuring out here. That's because it's a square. All right, let's take a look now one of the other ones they'll do are isosceles right triangles. So keep in mind that I'll draw on this guy. It's supposed to go straight up. Keep in mind that that's a 90 degree angle. This is the part. Do that brighter green. That's the part that's touching. And if it's an isosceles right triangle, that means these two sides are the same. And these are easy to figure out because the area of a triangle is one half base times height, 
And in this case, the base and the height are the same because this is a right angle and it's isosceles, so, so they're actually the same. All right, so the area of the triangle above in terms of F and G um, is, remember this distance is, you know, F of X minus G of X because it's the distance between the two curves. So it's that length. So the area of the triangle is going to be one half base, which is f of x minus g of x, times the height, which is another f of x minus g of x because they're the same. So we're going to say it's that. I always think of this one, isosceles right triangle. Look, it's just half of a square. If I draw in the diagonal, I've got an isosceles right triangle. So it's the same formula, but we're just using half of the area of the square. So that's another way to think about it. The volume of one prism, now remember this is a prism now that has maybe a triangular base, right? Like this guy, except we've just sliced it really thin and turned it on its side. So its volume is going to be its area of the triangular base times the thickness. So that's its volume of one. And then if we want to add them all up, We get that, and then typically we remember this um, integral. We'll pull out the one half. So you can see that these are the same, except this is going to be half the volume because you're taking every. You can think about taking every prism, like if these were your rectangular prisms, you're cutting every single one in half now, essentially. So you're cutting the volume in half. All right, so you could think of this also as doing, when they ask for isosceles right triangles, you could do the square one and cut it in half, up to you. Let's take a look at the picture. So if I take this same photo, um, I kind of need less rectangles to remember like where it was when it starts. Uh, this guy, right, like that. So uh, let's change the cross sections to we're not going to do squares. We're going to do right isosceles triangular cross sections. All right. So look at that. That thing got cut in half. You see, like once I roll it around, the the bottom half of this thing got cut off. So if I make it a little finer, we had that bean or slug looking shape before. Now it's like got sl sliced in half the long way. All right. So that's what's going on there. Sometimes they're going to ask for equilateral triangles. So again, this side is the side that we're assuming touches. And it's the distance between the two curves. So it's going to be F the upper and G the lower. So that's distance will be F minus G. Okay. That's this purple distance here. Equilateral is a little trickier because we need the height, which is right here. And if we have an e it's coming down perpendicular. If we have an equilateral triangle... Um, and we draw on the height, it makes a little 30, 60, 90. So a little geometry review. I'm going to take the length of this side right here, which will be half of f of x minus g of x, because it's going to split it right in half, the height. If I have that side, uh, that's the short leg. To get the long leg, I have to multiply it by the square root of 3. Right? If the short leg were x, then it's x root 3. Uh, if you don't remember some of these concepts, we can go over that in class together. So if I take that one half, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna write it over here in a better color. So this, the purple was the whole thing, right? That's the f of f, f of x minus g of x, and that's the base of our triangle. The red one is gonna be one half of f of x minus g of x. And then we have to multiply it by root 3 to get the blue one, which is the height. So that height is going to be root 3 times 1 half is root 3 over 2 times f of x minus g of x. So that's the height of our triangle. The purple is the base, 
So if we find the area of the triangle, we get area, I'm sorry, <clears throat> the area equals one half the base, which is f of x minus g of x. So that's our base there, times the height, which is root 3 over 2 times f of x minus g of x. This is all multiplication. So I can multiply the 1 half and the root 3. I'll get root 3 over 4 times f of x minus g of x. Why am I showing you all this? I could just give you these formulas. <clears throat> but a lot of times, I, I don't remember what they are. I have to know how to build them sometimes, like I'll forget. So if you know how to build these with me, first you find the area, you know, and then you multiply by the dx, then you integrate. Uh, if you know how to kind of build them up and the meaning of where all this comes from, it's a lot easier to do when you come across a question. So the volume of one slice or one prism, again, it's a triangular prism. is going to be root 3 over 4 uh, times f of x minus g of x squared, that's the area of the triangular base, times the thickness of the prism, times dx. That'll get me the volume of one prism, and if I want to add them all up, I'm going to add from a to b. We know we're going to pull our coefficient outside, and we're going to get f of x minus g of x squared so there's our area you know with missing the with the root 3 over 4 uh, times the thickness of each one so that's the volume of each one and then the integral from a to b adds up all those volumes um, the last one is what if they're semicircles so let's take a look let's change this just to get a visual semicircular cross sections. Oh, I skipped the equilateral cross sections, but that's okay. You can look at this, right? If they were half circles, so there's the part that's touching. So here's our overhead view. And you can see that when the radius is small, like all the way left, you get a small circle that's not very tall or very wide. But when you get towards the middle of the region where the distance between the two curves is bigger, that's where your, uh, that's where your circles start to get bigger, the radii start to get bigger. Let's make less semicircles all right so we're going to be using the volume of a cylinder here so again the part that's touching the region is this part and that's always going to be the difference between the two curves upper minus lower so f of x minus g of x uh, that's going to be our diameter so our radius is going to be half of one of those right half of f of x minus g of x. So then um, if we write, and remember like, again, if I'm doing the volume of one of these slices, it's got a very thin thickness of delta x there. Um, so the area of one of those times the height, so the area of that half circle is going to be uh, one half pi r squared. So it's going to be, and the radius was one half f of x minus g of x. All right, so remember, area of a circle is pi r squared. Why a half? Because we're doing a half a circle, okay? Then this half inside here, whoops, that's gonna be squared, is this is just part of our radius because our diameter was f minus g. So if we simplify this, we've got one half times pi times um, one fourth times f of x minus g of x squared. This is multiplication here, so this squared has to square the one half and square that quantity. Now I could do the one half times the one fourth and I get one eighth pi f of x minus g of x squared. All right, so, um, that's the area of the base. The volume of one half disc 
is going to be uh, that area. Let's call it pi over 8 at this point. Times the thickness, which is delta x or dx when it gets really, really small, infinitesimally small. So the volume of our region formed by that is going to be if we add all of those up from A to B, all those disks. And we're going to pull our constant pi over 8 out. And we're going to have f of x minus g of x squared times dx. This represents our volume. Well, we need the pi over 8 in there. but um, And then the sum, the integral sums them all up. So we've got our formulas. Yeah, of course, you can memorize these formulas. But I'm going to argue you're going to kind of forget them if you just try to memorize them. Understand how they're built. Then you'll never forget them. It's so my first year teaching AB Calc. I haven't done this in Honors Calc, so I haven't done this stuff in a long time, this volume stuff. Um, and when I started to prepare for like making the notes and stuff, it didn't take me very long to look around. I, you know, I kind of remembered how to build it, so I didn't have to memorize what the formulas were. Okay? So what do you notice about these formulas? We could talk about that in class, but... Uh, I think I'm going for essentially like you're always seeing this f of x minus g of x squared idea, right? There's always that in there. So um, we got to just kind of work with what are the coefficients, basically, right? So we've got a coefficient of 1, a coefficient of 1 half, a coefficient of root 3 over 4, a coefficient of pi over 8. So that's really the difference, knowing those coefficients. All right. So let's do a couple examples here. How are we doing on time? Not bad. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so region R is bounded by Y equals sine X. And so this one is, I'm going to, these are calculator based. We're going to put that in Y1. We're going to put that in Y2. Let me color code those. All right, so this one is our y2. This one's our y1. So you're going to, I'm going to pause the video. You're going to pause the video here. We're going to enter those into y1 and y2. Um, we won't waste time. You watching me punch that in. Okay, so I've punched those into y1 and y2. Uh, quick note, we've got a trig function in here. Let's make sure our mode is in radians because that'll mess everything up real quick. All right, so we're in y1. We got our y1 and our y2 equal in there. So now they want us to do cross sections are equilateral triangles. So um, equilateral triangles were the one that was a little tricky, but if I, if I draw my cross section, I like to draw it just to be sure if that's f minus g that's the part that's touching right um, then this is going to be right the smaller this is half and then so that's root 3 over 2 you can remember those because they, they're related obviously to the trigonometry if this side's the smaller one it's a half this one's the root 3 over 2 so our base is going to so we're going to integrate sorry we're going to go from We'll do it this way, from 0 to 2. And then the area of this triangle is going to be um, the f of x minus g of x. So in our case, it's going to be y1 minus y2 uh, dx. And it's squared uh, just because I guess I'm not, I'm not going to try to build it again. We already did that. So we know that it's root 3 over 4. Uh, times upper minus lower squared. I'm not going to try to build it again. Uh, pointless to do that. Um, I was going to multiply out everything base times height and blah, 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 but we don't need to do that. So you punch that in your calculator. So you can pause the video here and do that. I don't think you need me to go through that with you. It's not approximately. It's equal. And let's see what we get. Okay, welcome back. You should have got 4.321. Um, all right, let's move on to B. Cross sections are semicircles, right? So, oops, 
that's my f minus g on the bottom there. So my radius is going to be one half of f minus g. All right. So then if I do pi r squared, I'm getting. I'm trying to find the area right of the base. I'm getting pi times one half times f minus g squared. And then it's a half a circle, so it's times a half. So that's going to kind of represent the area of of this cross section. Once I get that, I put that in the integral. I would simplify it and stuff, which we already did before. So I've got f, so that's going to be y1 minus y2 squared. And then I add my thickness, and now I'm getting volume. And that's going from 0 to 2. We'll do this one together. So... Um, Alpha F int going from zero to two. Alpha F four is Y one. Okay, so we're getting four. Um, I have to multiply by pi over eight. Forgot to do that part. So times pi over eight. Oh, I didn't square it. I had to start this whole thing over. Sorry, forgot to square it. Let's try again. It's going to make me put it in parentheses there. Yeah. And then squared. I guess I got to put a lead parenthesis in there, maybe. Oh, this is a disaster. It's turning into a disaster. That's why you got to practice on your calculator, kids. All right. All right. Now let's go to the front here. And let's get rid of this. And we're going to make this pi over 8. All righty. Remember, if we go second, right arrow goes all the way to the end. All right, let's try that again. Three point. Whoops. 3.918. So you got the pleasure to watch me fumble around with the calculator there. If our cross sections are isosceles right triangles, see if you can write the integral here. Get ahead of me. I'll give you a second to get ahead of me. All right, so that's what you should get. Um, please do it on your calculator. Make sure you can do that stuff. Don't forget the one half. You can pause the video and see if you get what I get. The cross sections are squares. So it's going to be, if you already have isosceles right triangles, we know it's going to be double that. But let's write out the integral anyway. Okay, do that in your calculator. You should get 9.978. Cross sections are rectangles whose height is twice the length of the base. So we didn't quite have a formula for this one, so we have to build this one. So cross section whose rectangles. Now the base is always the part that we consider like that's on the on the curve, the f minus g, right? So if we're doing the area of a rectangle base times height and the base is going to be f of x minus g of x times the height the height is going to be twice the length of the base so it's going to be 2 times f of x minus g of x this will represent the area of our cross section if we slap that in the integral from 0 to 2 of course we'll pull the 2 out and we'll oh whoops we're going to use our y2 and our y1. 
we combine those, we multiply them together and just write it as squared. And then when we multiply by the thickness, uh, we're getting our volume. Okay, so let's do this one out. So we've got two times F int from zero to two. of y1 minus y2 squared. I forgot to put that opening parenthesis in there. Let's see if that matters. Uh, it does not matter there. 19.9 Five seven. Okay. Uh, rectangles whose height is one third the length of the base. So again, the area of the rectangle is base times height. So the base is going to be uh, y two is y one minus y two. That's the length of the base times the height, which is going to be one third that length y one minus y two. So I put it in the integral. I pull the one third through. It's y one minus y two squared that represents the area of the base the one third y1 minus y2 squared and then times the dx makes it a volume because that's the little thickness do that out on your calculator you should get 3.326 for our volume and these are all cubic units